well, all right. You know, I didn't think anyone was going to show up today after last Sunday, and so I am glad that I'm glad that you did. I, you know, I'm grateful. I pray that, um, gosh, I'm just praying that God's word is moving and working inside of your heart and your mind, helping you change and grow. And I pray that that's your prayer, is that you're growing, you're changing. You know, some of you have been here a really long time. Um, but I know, I believe it with all my heart that none of you think to yourselves, well, I've already done all the growing. I've already done all the changing. I figured it all out already. I have arrived. I know we don't think like that. So I know we need this. So, so let me just say, are we good, church? Yeah. Are we good? Are we ready for Let me just say that worship was amazing. I think we're going to sing that song again at the very end as we close. And uh, so uh, I'll just, all the worship team, all the singers, be ready. Uh, sound people, <laughs> my sound guys, be ready, please, for that. Uh, Adrian, you're far, so as soon as you get a chance, move back this way. Um, I just want to say that I love God's word. It's the truth, okay? And we need the truth. And I know that the truth is not always easy, but the truth is necessary. If the truth was easy, we wouldn't lie as much as we do. Gosh, I'm off to a bad start. You know, um, Ryan and I, my friend Ryan and I, we own a business and, and we, teach, um, we teach kids martial arts, specifically Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's grappling. And I have a handful of kids that have been training with us for, am I, am I straight here, Jordan? Yeah? I got to go over, huh? I looked at it right now. Whoever put Paul, where are you at? All right. Online people. Is that better? All right. And I have a hand, we have a handful of kids that have been, have been training for a while now, okay? And I would say that they're, they're, you know, they're seasoned. They're seasoned at what they do. My kids are some of those kids. They're seasoned. They're veterans. They understand. They, they know what's going on. They know what they need to do. They know what it takes to win. They know what it takes to compete. They know the work that they have to put in to grow and to get better. And sometimes what I do is I watch them, and, I, and as I'm watching them train and I, I'm watching them evolve in the sport, there's times where I'm looking at them and I see them just, man, they're, you know, I don't know, maybe they're tired, maybe they're lazy, maybe they don't want to be there. Um, you know, kind of sounds like us, right? Uh, maybe they just don't want to be there in that moment. Maybe they'd rather be at home relaxing on the couch, you know, watching Netflix, snacking. Um, and, and I'm watching them drill, which would be practicing. And, and I just look at the technique and it's just, it's, it's terrible. And there's times where I'll walk up to them and I'll say, what are you doing? I'm just like this. Same emotion, same facial expression, same context. And I'll say, what are you doing? Like, what is that? Is that, like, I, I never, we never even showed you that. Why are you even trying to do that? What, what, what are you guys doing over here? Do you want to be here or not? Do you want to drill? There's a tournament coming up in, in two days. Do you, you want to compete or do you not want to compete? Because if you're going to be here, you need to put the work in. you got to pretend that, that, you're, that you're in the match right now, that you're doing. You need to understand that i got to take everything into account, every move, every grip, every position. I have to make sure you got to take the, the opportunity that you have right now, the time that we have right now. It's one, one hour. Put the work in. And then sometimes I could see it on their faces. They're, they're, they're upset. They're offended. They're, they're hurt. And then I'll go back and I'll, tell them the say, and I'll tell them this. And I'll say, listen to me. You tell me right now. You tell me what kind of, we, if when you're a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, your, um, your title is professor. You tell me what kind of professor you want me to be. OK, because I, I'll tell you what, if you want me to be the professor that's just going to look at you and never say nothing, never correct you, never rebuke you, never hold you accountable. If you just want me to look at you, if you just want to show up and train and just have a good time, then that's fine. I won't say anything. But if you want me to if you want need to understand that I care about you, I care about your jujitsu. I care about you when you when it comes to competition time. I care about how you're going to perform. I want you to win. I want us to bring home medals, specifically the gold. I want you to do well. If you care, and you know that I care, and you know that I love you, and you know that I want well for you, I want you to improve. I'm not saying this to be mean to you. I'm saying this because I want you to be better. If you don't want that, then you tell me right now, and I won't give you that. And let me just say, church, 
I feel the same way with that as I do in this place right now. If you do not want the truth of God's word, gosh, then you probably shouldn't be in this church. But if you want, listen to me, the same thing. I care about you. I love you. We care about you. We love you. We do not want you to stay in the same place. I want you to grow. Do you want to grow? I want you to grow. So there's going to be times where the message is going to be difficult. It's going to be harsh. But I promise you, I care about you. We care about you. We love you. God loves you. He does not want you to stay the same. He wants you to change. He wants you to grow spiritually, mentally, emotionally. He wants, he wants you to become and to continue to become everything that he desires for you to become. And I feel the same way. When it comes to the word of God with us, I think God is up there and saying, man, like, like, I care about you. I love you. Have I not shown you that I loved you? Have I not been there for you? Have I not pulled you out of the muck, out of the dirt, out of the fire? Have I not pulled you and pulled you in, brought you into my glorious, my marvelous life? Has my grace been not been enough for you? Have I not poured it out enough for you? Have I not forgiven you over and over and over again? Yes, there's going to be times where my discipline, saith the Lord, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be tough. You're not going to like it, but it's for your benefit. And you got to say that, God, I know sometimes your word, it's rough, it's tough, but it's for me. It's for my benefit. It's for my growth. So if I can just, if you can just humble yourself before the Lord, I promise you, it'll be easier for you to receive his word. And not just the good word, not just the word that you like, but the word that, oh, that you say, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. man, that hurts a little bit, God. Oh, I don't like that you said that, Pastor Eric, Pastor Kathy. I don't like that you said that, but God, I know, God, that you care about me, that you love me, that you do not want to leave me in the same place that I've been. You want to take me out from some of my darkness, some of my bad habits, some of my bad ways, and you want to bring me into a better place to where I can grow, where I can mature, where I can flourish. You see, that is the attitude that you have to have when it comes to serving the almighty God. So if you are taking notes, write this down. Number one, number one, if we are going to keep growing, we said, we said we have a before, we said we have an after, and we said we have a forever. God is our forever. This is what we have to do, and we have to humble ourselves to do this. We have to recognize. The very first thing that we have to do is we have to recognize. We have to recognize where we are weak, where we miss it, where we fail, where we fall. You have to, man, you have to ask God, help me, God. Expose me, God. Where am I missing it, God? I do not want to miss it anywhere with you, God. And you know, the word of God, man, Jesus is writing a letter in the book of Revelation, if you turn there with me. And, and we don't go there a lot because there's just a ton of things going on in that book. And it's all prophetic. And sometimes it's really hard to understand. Even for myself, it's hard to understand. But Jesus is writing a letter to a church in a city called Ephesus. And let me just explain to you, Ephesus is a, is a modern day city. It's a happening city. There's a lot of things going on. Let me just say this. There's a lot of wrong things going on in that city. And there's a church that's there. And Jesus is writing a letter. And it starts off really well, but then it gets really rough. And I'll start reading. I'm going to read out of the Passion. I really like the way this letter reads. Jesus is writing to this church. Revelation chapter 2, verses 2 through 7 out of the Passion. It says, Jesus says, I know, that you've, I know all that you've done for me. You have worked hard and persevered. See, that sounds good coming from Jesus. I know, I know that you don't tolerate evil. You have tested those who claim to be apostles and prove they are not, for they were imposters. I also know you have bravely endured trials. Come on, any, any of you in here? Yeah, I think that's all of us. We've, all of us have endured some trials. And persecutions because of my name. Listen, yet you have not become discouraged. Man, those are good words coming from Jesus. <laughs> but then the next part. But Jesus goes on to say, but despite all that, ah, this would be hard. 
God, Jesus is just, Jesus is just telling you all how awesome you are and how much, you know, you've, you've persevered and how you've, man, endured trials and how you just, man, you've been doing it. You've been working hard for the Lord. You've been showing up to church. You've been serving on the Ministry of Helps team. You've been ushering. You've been in the parking lot. You've been on the worship team coming to practice, showing up at 7, 7.30 a.m., warming up, learning new songs. You've been doing all the things. You've been, uh, you've been a part of this church for 15, 20, 25 years. You've been just doing it all. You've been doing it all as best as you can. And Jesus goes in there and tells you all the things you're doing right, but he says, but I I have this one thing against you. Oh. oh, but Lord, you just said that I was. No, no, no. I, I know I said that. But, 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 but do you, do you want all that I have for you? But I have one thing against you. You have abandoned or left or walked away from the passionate love you had for me in the beginning. Now I know some of us can relate to that. You remember what it was like. Oh, you remember what it was like. Some of you, you, you remember it and you miss it. Oh, I remember what it was like to, to walk with you, Lord, to... To be in love with you, Jesus. I remember what it was like to just wake up and want to be in your presence. I wanted to position myself to be with you, Lord, because I knew that's what I needed. I remember what it was like to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness, to want to be inside of your word, for your love to just nourish my body and my mind and my soul and my heart. But you've abandoned, you've walked away, and you've left that passionate love that you once had. Oh, God, that would break my heart. Oh, Jesus just Jesus just complimented you so much and then he just destroyed you with one single sentence. Think about how far you have fallen, Jesus said. Repent and do the works of love you did at first. He says, I will come to you and remove your lamp stand from its place of influence. I love that. If you do not repent although to your credit here we are again jesus just like back and forth with us playing with our emotions although to your credit you despise the practices of the nicolaitans which i also despise people that were not living right that were doing wrong they were he was saying you still understand what it is to do right and so i see that but yet 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 you've lost your first love the one whose heart is open let him listen carefully to what the spirit is saying let me say that one more time because you need to understand the language that Jesus is speaking. The one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying. Now to all the churches, to the one who overcomes, I will give access to feast on the fruit of the tree of life that is found in the paradise of God. There's a difference between losing something and leaving something. You see, you lose something, you misplace something. You don't know where it's at. You've ever lost something important? Paperwork, receipts, your phone, the remote to your TV, you know, something important to you and, 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 you, and you have to look for that. But there's a huge difference between misplacing and losing something. Listen, listen. Then abandoning, walking away, and leaving something. You see... See, some of us, we have our Bibles at home, our physical Bibles, and some of us, we have, you know, our iPads, our tablets, or our phones, and we have the Bible app, app on there. So, so at home, we know where our Bible is, right? It's not lost. We just abandon it and leave it there for the week and never read it again till Sunday. That's the difference. You get it? Like, I know where my iPad is at home, sitting on my counter. I leave my house. I'll walk away. I abandon it. I leave it. I don't think twice about it. I know where it's at. But do you understand the difference in the language? Jesus is not saying that you lost your first love. He's saying that you left your first love. And see, this is important for us, church, to recognize as believers 
is that you have to understand that you have to cultivate, you have to build, you have to continue to grow in deeper intimacy and relationship with God. How? Why? It's by spending time with him. Why is that important? Because we know we need to. Right? Well, what do I do? Well, oh, just, just hold yourself accountable right now. What's your prayer life look like? Just think about it. Like when I wake up in the morning, what do I do? I look at my phone. I get up. I go to the restroom. I brush my teeth. I start showering. I get ready for work. But there's no thought of God. There's no thought of relation. There's no thought of passionate love. There's no thought of thankfulness and grace and mercy and being thankful for all that God has done in my life. There's no time. There's no, I don't have any time because I have to wake up just in time just to get ready for work. And then I got to go to work. But I don't, I don't set my alarm and say, let me set my alarm because I want some uninterrupted time with my heavenly father. I want to get on my knees and I want to worship and I want to pray and I want to thank him. I want to build myself up in my most holy faith. There's a difference between losing something and leaving something behind or abandoning something. And this is what I want to get to us is that we have to recognize where we're missing it. What we're leaving behind, what we are abandoning, what we are walking away from. Do you, God, this is crazy because look, Jesus just said on the outside, it looks like you're doing really well. Man, you're serving, you're growing, you're enduring, you're persevering, you show up every Sunday, you're at your post, you're doing what God is calling you to do. But Jesus says, but man, there's just one thing you're missing. You're losing, you're missing the most important thing, the thing that I am, the thing that I exist for, and that's love because that's what I am. God is love. And that love, that same love, that's, a, that's the love that you have to have inside of you. So you can do whatever you want. But let me just say this, church. You, the, our job uh, as, as believers is to do two things. And it's very common in Christianity. It's to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's what Jesus said. The number one thing that you have to do. Don't put anything before me. Love me before anything else. Over anything else. Love me. Amen. And then he said you got to love others. Oh, you got to love others the way that I have loved you. But what happens is, is we get caught up in, in the what. What do I have to do? Oh, I got to be at church. I got to serve. Man, I, I got to be a part of the team. Um, I, I, I'm caught up in the what. What do I got to do? But let me just say something. When you get too caught up in the what sometimes, you lose and you leave behind. You abandon the why. Why am I here? Why, why do I show up? Why am I, what, what, what does God call me to be outside of these walls in this world? He's called me to be a light. He's calling me bold and courageous in my faith. He's called me to, to, to go out and seek and find the lost. Right. Are you tracking with me this morning, church? Yes. You recognize where you are weak. You recognize where you are missing it. I don't want us to be just a what church. I want us to be a why church. Why are we here? Why do we do what we do? Why do we exist? What is our mission? It's to love others. It's to love God over anything else. It's to reach out to those that are lost, hurting, and broken. You know, um, Charles Spurgeon, he, he said this. If you don't know who he is, I don't, I, I don't have a lot of time to explain, but you can look him up. Um, he said this. He said, a, a church has no reason for being a church when she has no love within her heart. Listen, or when that love grows cold. Lose love, lose all. Or I would say this, abandon love and lose everything. You know, the scripture in, in Corinthians, I believe, just talks about all these things going on spiritually. But it always says the same thing at the very end. You can be all these different things, but if you do not have love, you are nothing. And so my prayer is that you check yourself. Have you lost that love? Have you lost that passion? Have you lost that intimacy with your heavenly father? Listen, if you have us, that's how good our God is. Bring it back and watch God. Man, God, God's a good God, church. Let me just say that. He's a loving father and he loves you very much. And he wants you to be in good standing with him. And, and, and not just in the, in the outside, but on the inside as well. Number two, renew. This is a common theme here at HD Church. Previously, Valley Faith Fellowship. Previously, Delano Christian Center. This is a th common theme. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Renew, church, beloved friends, out of the passion 
Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? How should you be responding, church, to God's grace, His mercy? Listen, to surrender. That's the word. Right there. To surrender. To give up everything. To surrender yourselves to God. To be His sacred, living sacrifices. Listen, and live in holiness. Last week we said that God said what? Be holy because I am holy. He didn't say you are holy because I am holy. He said you have work to do in order to be holy. And he's telling us here, and live in holiness, meaning to walk in the holiness of God, to be like Jesus, experiencing all that delights his heart. Do you want to delight the heart of your father? For this becomes your genuine expression of worship, your authentic expression of worship. Stop intimidating. Here we go. Stop intimidating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. One translation says this, do not be conformed to this world. Oh, let me say that one more time. Stop intimidating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you or do not be conformed to this world, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will, listen, as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Amen. Now, let me say a couple of things right, 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 right quick right here. The difference between conform and transform. Conform is to act in accordance with expectations, to behave in a manner of others. Let me say that one more time. To behave in a manner of others or to be like others, especially as a result. Listen, especially as a result of social pressure. That is to conform. And then the Bible says, don't do that. Do not conform to this world. Do not allow the social pressures of life to... Don't allow that to make you want to conform and be like the world. But instead, what's the difference between conform and transform? To be transformed, listen, is to change greatly the appearance or form of. And so I was watching um, this series on Netflix. I think it's called Human or Humans or something like that. And I just watched the beginning. And listen, I'm, I'm not a doctor or a neuroscientist or anything like that. But it was very fascinating. And it always is fascinating when you learn about, like, listen, when you learn about God's creation. Okay? Because God created you. He designed you. He built this right here. Do you see that? Inside of this right here is your brain. He created that. He designed that. And inside of our brain are these things called neurons. There's hundred, over 100 billions of neurons in your brain. And there's like electrical, computeristic type things. But listen, listen, it's, it's really cool because the neurons inside of your brains, and there's something called neuroplasticity, and this is your ability, your ability, church, your ability to change and create new ways, new habits, new patterns in your life. And it was really cool because the, 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 the doctors and the scientists were explaining, they were saying, look, you have the ability. If there was something in your brain that, that, that maybe you used to act or react, the way they used to think or live, that you have the power. Now, now, let me just say this. I, like, we know it's not us that has the power. We know that the power comes through the power of the Holy Spirit that's inside of us, through the word of God that we plant inside of our hearts, that we can get inside of our hearts, that we can speak out loud with our mouths, that we can put inside of our minds. That is what transforms us but but listen the more you put God's word inside of your life the more those neuron neurons begin to change the more they begin to shift and grow but, but 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 hear me out but if you're always conforming to the world if you're always looking to the world if you're like what did I say earlier if you're not spending any time with your heavenly father spiritually trying to grow, trying to, to live out what the scripture teaches, trying to put the scripture inside of you. You know, we started a series in the midweek that Brother Les kicked off, and I kind of, I feel bad because I kind of put him on the spot to, to do that because um, the time, we had a time conflict with us, but, but thank God for good help, for good leadership, for good friends that can come through and help you when you need it. And Brother Les stepped up, but we're starting a midweek series just called One. One. 
And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on one scripture. There's going to be other scriptures in there, but we're going to be focusing on one scripture. And, and the, the whole point of this, okay, if you watch midweek, the whole point of this is for you to get that, whatever that scripture is for the week, whatever Brother Les read, I believe in Psalms, uh, whatever he read is to get that inside of your heart, but not just inside, but it's got to be in your memory. Like what, my, my, what I believe God wants for us is to have God's word inside of us. Why? So we can recall it. Why? Because, because the enemy's going to come. Because life is going to come. Because trouble's going to come. Because you're going to come. <laughs> like I mean you against yourself. We are our own worst enemies at times. So, so, so when the enemy comes against you, when the world comes against you, and, and you're saying, well, I don't, I, God, what was that scripture again? What was, I, man, Lord, I know you say something about, but man, you can recall it. I can, recall, I can recall numerous amounts of scriptures and pas passages throughout the word of God, and I do recall them when I need them. Man, when I'm afraid, I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm recalling 2 Timothy 1.7. Oh, that's one of my favorite scriptures. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but instead he gave us power, love, and a sound mind. Oh, man, that fear that's creeping on me right now, that anxiety that's pulling on me, man, those bad thoughts that I'm having about my family, my kids, my grandkids, my situation, my health, those bad reports, that, that fear that's coming. Lord, you said in your word that you did not give me that spirit of fear, but instead you gave me power through your word. You gave me love and you gave me a sound mind. So, Lord, I'm asking you right now for that sound mind. I'm asking you for that peace that you said surpasses all understanding. And I don't know how to understand what's going on in my life right now, Lord, but you said that you'll give me a peace a peace that goes over and above my own understanding oh what else did you say about understanding proverbs 3 5 and 6 you said to trust in you with all your heart to lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path lord help me i need you to direct my path right now. see that is changing your brain plasticity the neurons are beginning to shift and change but this is god's design god's creation and God gave you this ability. Now you have the power through his word to change the way you think. But if you're never doing anything about it to change, if you're never adding value, if you're never investing specifically the word of God in your life, then you're always going to struggle with the same old things. And you could be here for one month, one year, 10 years, 20 years, and you could still be struggling with the same thing that you started struggling with 20 years ago today. But God gives us, church, through his word, the power to change all the neurons in our brains, all the old habits, all the old ways. That's why the Bible says renew. Because when you renew your mind to the word of God, you not only change the way you think, but you begin to change the way you live. I am preaching better than you are responding. But I also believe some of you are listening with intent. You change the way you think, you change the way you live. You change the way you live, you change the way you speak. Right? So now, so now because I've changed all those neurons and neuroplasticity, whatever, science and medicine, that's good. I'm not knocking. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying that's the way our brain, that's the way God created our brain. He created you to be shapeable, shiftable, movable, adaptable. He is the potter. We are the clay. His word can change us and shape. That, that's, what, that's what I want you to walk away with, okay? You don't have to be the same. You tell yourself that right now. The things that are wrong in my life, the darkness, the mistakes, my past, my before, whatever it is that's hindering you, my present, my bad reports, the things that are going on, my family, my children, whatever it is. You tell yourself right now, I don't got to be the same. I don't got to be afraid. My God is mighty. He's powerful. My latter can still be greater than my former. I don't have to walk in the same darkness that I've been walking in. You got to stand up to your enemy and you got to use the word of God. That's right. Amen. In my marriage. No, devil, you're a liar. That's right. Amen. Glory to God. I'm renewing my mind to your word. That's 
I want your word, God. I want you to live inside of me. I'm tired of dealing with my thoughts. I'm tired of dealing with my emotions. I'm tired of dealing with my anxiety. I'm tired of being bitter. I'm tired of not being able to forgive. I'm tired of being easily offendable in my life. I don't know if it's offendable a word. I'm tired of it, Lord. I'm tired of it. Man, Lord, I want to love you with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. God, I want to love others the way you've called me to love others. God, I want people to know that your love lives here. And so I renew my mind to your word. Listen, daily. Because what did Joshua say? He said that this book of the law shall not depart from my mouth. Listen, listen. We speak the word of God, but specifically in this context, Joshua is saying this, but I am going to meditate on it day and night. Can you imagine what your life would look like if you truly meditated on God's word day and night? And then when you meditated on it, you begin to act it out and you spoke it and you thought about it and you knew it and you remembered it. Do you tell me what you think your life would look like? I'm disciplining myself. I know, I know that I'm, I, I know right now that I, my mind and my heart, I know that I'm tired and I'm in, a, in an emotional state and I'm grouchy and I'm grumpy and I could snap at anybody, but your word has reminded me who I am in you, Lord, and I'm not going to allow my flesh to overpower my spirit. You imagine what your life would look like, but you answer, you answer this for yourself. Answer this for yourself in your own heart, in your own mind. You ask yourself, am I truly putting in the word of God, the way I should be day in and day out. I promise you, if you are, his word does not know how to return void. So we renew our minds to the word of God. Because some of you, you really believe it and you've convinced yourself that you can't change. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You've told yourself that. It's never going to get better. I'm never going to change. Things are never going to get better for me. Oh, man, I see the way they're, they're growing and the way God has blessed them. That's not in the books for me. That's a lie. You don't have to believe that lie. You keep renewing your mind to God's word. Listen, God's word has given us all the tools we need to make the changes that matter. It's our job to allow his word to transform us so we can overcome anything that comes against us so we transform ourselves by the renewing of our minds to God's word we change all the neurons in our brain and we allow God to saturate and nourish and help us flourish through his word my last point church number three is to recenter I like this Jesus should and always be the center of our lives he should always be the pinnacle and the crux of our lives, of our families, of our marriages. No matter what, we should, it's always, always about Jesus. And it goes back to Jesus. The Bible says in Psalms 32, um, I'm sorry, Psalms 37, chapter 37, 23 and 24 out of, the, out of the NCV. It says, when people's steps follow the Lord, God is pleased with their ways. If they stumble, I like that. Let me just say that that's, that's encouraging right there. If they stumble, God, God knows us, right? God knows we don't get it right all the time. God knows we miss the mark. God knows we struggle. God, listen, God knows we sometimes abandon our first love and walk away. But he says, if they stumble, they will not fall. Because the Lord holds their hand. Yeah. You see, that scripture is the goodness of God. Yeah. The mercy, the grace of God. Yeah. We went to um, Disneyland. I'm just going to tell you, I'm not a big fan of Disneyland. My mother is a great, mighty fan of the <laughs> almighty mouse. <laughs> Me, not so much. All right, so, but of course, you know, you have kids and I'm sure grandkids and, and grandparents, you guys, I mean, this is what you do, right? Yeah. Parents and grandparents, you do your best to, to, to enjoy life and take your kids places. And, and I think, I think the, the most important part of, of doing things that you know your kids or grandkids are going to enjoy is just, it's just you looking at them and watching their joy take place. Right. 
That's the whole, that's the whole shebang right there. But I am convinced. This is what I'm convinced of. I am convinced that Disneyland is not the happiest place on earth. We were sitting down. <laughs> and it's not like super hot, but it's hot enough, okay? You know, it's like almost 80 degrees, but when you're just in the sun, you know, and you're walking, and, and, and we were sitting down. And have, have, you, have any of you ever had a Dole Whip? Okay. See, those are heavenly. That helps with the process. I don't know. If you don't know what a Dole Whip is, it's this soft serve uh, pineapple ice cream, and inside of it is fresh pineapple juice. And it's, it's really refreshing. And so my wife and, and I and Regan were enjoying some ice cream, sitting down. And my mom and the other older grandkids were just running amok in the park, causing trouble. And, um, and while we're sitting down, um, we notice across the table from us uh, this, this dad who, um, I don't know what he told his kid, but I think he was just teasing his son, who was probably about maybe 10 years old or so, and he said something jokingly to his son. They were right across from us, and he made his son cry. And his son started crying. His son got his feelings hurt, and I was all, typical, you know, that younger generation. They're just not as tough as, as we were growing up, and some of you guys, you know, but it's okay. You know, I don't know what he said, but, but all I know is this. All I know is that the, the dad was trying to, to you know, console and, and tell the son, hey, why well, didn't even, he, this is what I heard him say. He saw he's telling his wife because his wife got mad. You know, Mama Bear comes in and he's like, I didn't even say anything. All I just said was this, this, and that. He's crying over here, you know, you know, dads. And then the mom was like, just leave him alone. And so then what happens? Then the mom and the dad start bickering and fighting. And then I'm sitting there, I'm like, I knew this wasn't the happiest place on earth. <laughs> I knew it. And they're fighting. They're fighting, man. Full-blown arguing. I'm not kidding. And, and <laughs> I feel so bad because then my wife, we turn our seats and we're just eating our ice cream, watching them go at it. Like, all oh, right. Entertainment plus being here at Disneyland with the soft-serve Dole Whip. This is great. And so we're watching them throw down in an argument because the son is crying. And, and then kids, you know, kids, little manipulators. And so he is um, he's fighting with his wife. And his wife starts talking bad to him. The grandparents are there, but they're quiet, heads down, eating their ice cream. They don't want any part of that. They don't want any part of that mess right there. They're, I think I get it. I think grandparents are like, that's your business. You guys handle that. Figure it out. And so then the dad storms off. And the, the best part about this story is that, is that I don't see how the son, um, I don't see how the son could have got that hurt and become that sad because the dad is wearing the goofy hat with the big ears and he's got a goofy mask on so his face looks like goofy halfway I'm like how could you how could you take whatever your dad said that seriously when he looks like goofy but there he goes storming off and then the wife is calling him telling him to get back he takes off and then the wife tells her mom and dad or whoever it was their in-laws or whatever she's all well he's gone he's gone and so then that fight ended, and so me and Jess turned back to each other. It kept eating our ice cream. <laughs> Listen, this is my point. My point is this. On your GPS systems, whatever you use, Google Maps or the Waze app, on there, um, when you set your destination for your directions, your direction, wh wherever you're going, and you hit go, of course, it begins to take you there. And it leads and guides you turn by turn, street by street, exit by exit. And it's not always like 100% accurate, but it is pretty accurate if you follow the direction that you're supposed to go in. But on the bottom left of that or somewhere on your screen, there's this little button that says recenter. Because what you can do is you can scroll uh, ahead to see where you're going or where, or where somewhere else is. You could scroll, but you could always hit recenter and get back to the place to where you need to be so you could keep going on the path that you're supposed to be going on. And here's what I think when I think about that couple that was fighting at the not happiest place in the world. Is this is, this is what I think? No, this is what I think to myself. See, I don't know them. Of course, I don't know them personally. I just know myself personally. But this is what I know about myself. I know that that could happen to any of us at any time in our lives. And I know that it has happened to us. And, and I'm not just talking about marriage. I'm just talking about life in general. But when you recognize your weaknesses... And you continue to build and renew your mind to and through the word of God. 
This is what I promise. I promise that when those moments happen, maybe not all the time, maybe maybe not all the time, but if, if you're putting enough word inside of you, I promise you that God will recenter you to the place that you need to be to put you back on the track and path that you need to be on. And I think in those moments, that's the way we have to think. Is we got to think to ourselves, God, God, I, God, help me, God. I know the direction that I need to be going in. I know that my steps. So you said that when I follow you, Lord, that you're pleased in my ways. And if I stumble, if I go off the path, if I go in the wrong direction, you're not going to let me fall. You're not going to let me go the wrong way. You're going to help recenter me. You're going to help me keep me. You're going to help keep me on the right path. God, that's what I desire. See, this is what you should be desiring, church is you should, be, you should be desiring for God to constantly and continually recenter your spirit, Amen. to reca recalibrate it, Amen. To, to make the proper adjustments to put you back on the right path. Amen. We recognize where we struggle. Listen, you recognize where you're strong, Right? And let me say this, uh, man, a, a, a mature Christian is going to understand that what we do is, is we build off each other's strengths yes. and we labor in each other's weaknesses, yes. meaning we work to help each other grow where we are weak, not judge each other. Right. Yes. Like, that's, not my, that's not my job. I mean, my, part of my job is to, is to help you when I see you going in the wrong direction. But ultimately, I want to labor with you in your weakness. I don't want to beat you up in your weakness. You already know you're weak in that. I don't need anybody to tell me where I'm weak. That's just going to, I don't need you to kick me when I'm down. It's not going to do anything for me. I need, what I need you to do is help me. You can correct me. You can rebuke me. Hopefully I'm humble enough to receive that rebuke and correction through the word of God in God's love, in his truth, in a proper way, in a proper manner. Hopefully we have that relationship to where you can come to me and talk to me. And hopefully I receive that in the right way. But I don't need you to beat me up when I'm already down. I don't want to beat you up when you're already down. I want to help you when you're weak. I want to help you in your struggle. Why? Because God says that when you are weak, he is strong. So I feel like I need to be like that for you as well. When you're weak, I want to be strong for you. I want to labor in your weaknesses, and I want you to help me build off of each other's strengths. Yeah. Amen. Wow, this is such a good word. Huh? You know, it's not, not about me. I'm just saying, you know, when I sat there, let me just say, be honest with you. When I sat there and when we were singing, I say the same prayer over and over. Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Every word that comes out of my mouth, let it be determined by you. Please help me, Lord. Amen. So we recognize, we renew, listen, and then we recenter. And this is the prayer. Are you guys ready, Amanda? All right, let's do this. You guys can stand, church. Come on. Isn't God's word so good? What are we going to do? Are we going to sing it? I, got, I have a scripture that I want to read and then uh, that I feel I, I think this is going to be a scripture that you should put to remembrance for yourselves. And it's a prayer um, through the book of Psalms, and I'll read it. Um, and I think this is a good prayer to help us recenter our lives at times um, when we feel like we're off the path. You ever felt like you're off the path? Oh, man, me too. Me too. And so Psalms... 25, uh, 4 through 11. This is out of the NCV. And I like to give you the translation that way you can write it down or read it later. But this person's praying. And he starts off with these few words. He says, Lord, tell me your ways. Show me how to live. Guide me in your truth and teach me my God, my Savior. That alone probably gets you through a tough day. I trust you all day long. Lord, remember your mercy and love that you have shown since long ago. Let me say that one more time. Lord, remember your mercy and love that you have shown since long ago. Do not remember the sins and wrong things that I did when I was young. But remember to love me always because you are good, Lord. The Lord is good and right. He points sinners to the right way. He shows those who are humble 
how to do right. Now pay attention. He shows those how he shows those who are humble how to do right. And he teaches them his ways. All the Lord's ways are loving and true for those who follow the demands of his agreement. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my many sins. You see, like that right there, man, before you go to bed. That's, that, that's, that's what I would, you know, because sometimes I know some of us, we just like, I don't know what to pray. and That right, you got all kinds of prayers and psalms, I'll tell you that right now. You got all kinds of words that you could speak over your life. But that right there, that alone, those three small paragraphs, gosh, that's encouraging. And this is what I want to do. I want to pray with every head bowed and every eye closed I want to ask you church if you are in this place this morning and maybe you feel displaced or maybe you felt like you have abandoned and walked away from your love, your passionate love, your intimate relationship with God. Maybe you feel like you need some, some help from God to recognize where you're missing it, where you're weak, where you're struggling. Maybe you are telling yourself right now, gosh, I need to renew my mind to the Word of God. My, my mind is not even close to being renewed. And God, I, you're, you're telling yourself, I need to be recentered. I, I feel like I'm all over the place at times. I feel like I'm not even on the right path. Or I am on the right path, God, but I just feel like I I, I, I take too many detours. But I want to be recentered with you, God. And, and that prayer, Lord, I, I want that prayer in my life. If that's you, then I just want you to be honest. If you need, if you would want to pray and God to just help us as we move forward for the rest of this year. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Appreciate it. I appreciate your honesty, your transparency. I appreciate your vulnerability. I appreciate you just saying, God, I need, I need help. I need help. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sing that song that we saying the blessing and I want you to I want you to worship I want you to praise I want you to give thanks I want you to cry out to God I want you to ask God to help you to help you recognize, to help you renew, to help you recenter your life. I want you to ask God to help you in your struggles. I want you to ask God to build you up. I want you to ask God to forgive you. I want you to repent of anything that has gone wrong or you've done wrong in your life. I want you to cry out to God for yourself and ask God, God, if I've walked away or abandoned that love, I need that. I want that love back, God. I want to recenter my life with you as we sing this song. Jesus, come on, I think we ought to give the Lord one more shout of praise. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! Hallelujah! The awesomeness of God. He is awesome, amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can turn the lights on and you can be seated for just a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Telling you, the Bible says that no weapon formed against you can ever prosper. Amen. But He is right there, ready to help. Amen. Amen. And you know what? God is never too far, He's right there. Don't ever, it, sometimes it feels like that that God is just way out there, but he's not. He's not. He's near in your heart, in your mouth. He's right there, ready. If the Bible says if you call on the name of the Lord, he will be there. 
Amen. All we do is have to call on Jesus. Amen. Whenever we're in trouble, whenever we're where we think, oh man, this is it. No, call. Call on the name. The name of Jesus. And he's right there to touch you, to save you, to lift you out of whatever it is that you have got yourself into. Because <laughs> it's us, right? <laughs> it's us. We get ourselves in trouble. But God, he's always there. He's always there for you. Amen. Amen. Oh, he's just a, a breath away. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, I'm so glad that you're here this morning. I just want to welcome you to HD Church. Amen. I just, I just am excited. I am so excited. Every time I walk through and come up here and see everyone, I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. Uh, you feel a little bit normal. Amen. Amen. You feel like, okay, things are getting better. And, and I just believe they are. Amen. I, I know we still have to be careful, and you should be. You should take precautions and be careful and still do all the good things that you should do anyway. Wash your hands, all that stuff. Right? We were taught that a long time ago, so we should keep that up anyway. So, But uh, I'm thinking, I thank God. I just believe that we're on a better path. Amen. For our world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But it's so good to have you here, and so good to have you here if you are listening online. We love you. We miss you. And I know that you'll make it back here um, one day. Amen. I just know it. I know in my heart you will, and we'll all be together again. Amen. Singing that song, we're together again. It's an old song. <laughs> um, but praise the Lord. Amen. Thankful that you're here this morning. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? I think that we're going to have a great word today from Pastor Eric. Amen. I pray you open up your hearts and you get ready to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. But before we do that, we are going to do something just as exciting. Come on. Don't stop now. This is just as exciting. You get a chance to honor God. Amen. That, that is exciting. And before we do that, I want to read a portion of scripture found in Mark chapter 10. Open your Bibles, open up whatever it is that you use to Mark chapter 10. I'm reading out of the Amplified, the classic version. Um, if you want to look at that, that's fine. But Mark 10 verse 17 says this. Thank you, musicians. You guys do a great job. I love you. Amen. It says this, um, as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked him, Teacher, you are essentially and perfectly moral. Good. What must I do to inherit eternal life? This is to partake of eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom. So we have this man uh, running up to Jesus as Jesus was on the road. Uh, going to his next destination, this man came running up to him and said, man, well, Jesus, I know, I know you're the Messiah. What is it? I know you're good. I know that everything you do is good. What, what can I do? What do I have to do to be a part of that? What do I have to do to follow you? What do I need to do? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me essentially and perfectly and morally good? There's only one. There's only one good person, and that's God. And we know that, right? We know God, Jesus, they're, they're all good. We know that. But Jesus was getting a, a, a point across to him. He said, man, I, I'm just not the only one good. There's a good God. Amen? And so now he's going to explain to him what he has to do, what he needs to do. And he says, you know the commandments. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not fraud. Honor your father and mother. Amen. Right? Come on, moms and dads, for your little wonderful blessings out there. <laughs> Honor your father and mother. And the man said this to Jesus. He replied, Teacher, I have carefully guarded and observed all of these and taken care not to violate them from my boyhood. In other words, he said, since I was a small child, I did everything. I did everything that was 
written in your word. I did everything that was commanded. I did everything to do what I was supposed to do to be good. I said, I've done all of that I've, since I was a boy. And Jesus looked, and you know, I, I love the way that Jesus responded. And he looked at him, but the Bible says that he looked at him with love. Because I know that God loves us. And I know that we think sometimes we, we have done everything right, but there's always things in our life that we could do better. Come on, is, is anybody with me? How many of you know that, man, right, I, well, maybe Irene probably got it pretty much. Should we ask James? <laughs> but but um, I'm sure that the young man, when, when Jesus responded, my thinking and my, my believing, okay, is that that young man thought, man, this is it. I got it. I, I, this, is, this is great because I've done it all. I've done everything. But Jesus looked at him in love, and he said, there's one thing that you lack. And he said, you need to go sell all that you have and give your money to the poor. Wow. Now, I just lost all of you right there because you're like, oh, oh, dear. Oh, my. <laughs> and, and Jesus even told him. He just didn't say that, go sell and give your money to the poor. But he said this, and you'll have treasure in heaven. And he said, come and follow me. Come and accompany me walking the same road that I walk. Are we truly, honestly, church? Are we truly, honestly, willing to walk the same road as Jesus? you got to ask yourself that question. Am I really, really, truly willing to walk the same road? Because walking that same road means you're willing to give up everything. Everything everything laying everything down all the things that you might like to do all the things that you do that you shouldn't do all those things are you really 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 saying I want to walk the same road as you walk Jesus because Jesus laid his life down amen you all just got quiet <laughs> But that's okay because I want you to understand that, you know, it wasn't so much that Jesus wanted him to get rid of everything. He just wanted him to give him his whole life, not just part of it. Amen? And that's what we're supposed to do anyway, church, is we're supposed to give Jesus our whole life. We're not supposed to have secrets in the closet. Amen. We're supposed to open all those doors and say, okay, God, I expose my whole life to you. Here's all my mistakes, all my, my fumbles and everything that, that, man, I want to get over. I'm just having a hard time. But Jesus said lo he loved him. He said, you got to be willing. That's the whole thing, willing and obedient. Amen. And why are we talking about this when we're receiving the offering? Because you have to be willing to be a person that gives. You have to be willing to be a tither because that's probably, other than your wife and your family, that's probably the closest precious thing to you is your finances because that's what keeps you going and what keeps you alive, right? I mean, you don't put your money before your wife or your children or your husband know you that all comes but but money is is part of your life but jesus just asks 10 percent. that's all he doesn't ask you to give half <laughs> he doesn't ask you to give 90 and you keep 10 no he just said give 10 learn to do that but you know you could do over that i always try to do over i always try to i try to go o o above and, and beyond that every single year I try to set myself goals and say, no, I'm not going to just do that. I'm going to do more because of what he's done for me. Amen. Amen. And I'm just thankful and grateful. And, and I honor him. So he's trying to get this young man to understand that you, you have to be willing to just give up everything. 
But his promise was, don't worry. You'll have something. You'll have more than what you could even ask or think if you'll just trust him. Amen. And so every time we honor God with our tithe and every time we honor God with our giving, what does he promise back to us? He says, I'll give back to you. Prove me. Prove me. I will. I'll give back to you in more ways than you could ever think. And I know that God has done that for me. And, and it, the, the, the end of that scripture was kind of, kind of sad. And he said at the saying, and at that saying, the man's countenance fell and was gloomy. And he went away grieved in sorrow, for he was holding great possessions. Or maybe the possessions were holding him. Amen? Amen? So I, I pray and I, I trust that you know how much God has done for you and you're grateful for what he's done and that you learn to honor him with the first fruits, amen, of all of your income and know that he's always willing to do more. You can never outgive God, ever, ever. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just love you and honor you. Thank you for being who you are, a, a wonderful God, a, an amazing God, a great God, a God who never leaves us or forsakes us, but is always willing to stand by us. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross, that you gave everything for us. While we were yet sinners, you died for us. Thank you that you live in our hearts in such a big way. And this morning, we just honor you for that. We honor you with the first fruits of our income. We honor you with our tithe and our offering. We honor you because that is what you've called us to do. And we do it with a cheerful heart. And we do it with a smile on our face. And we do it because we're grateful and we love you, Jesus. And thank you for every person that, that gives in, into this ministry, God, that supports HD Church, Father, that this, this ministry can continue to go forth, God. We just thank you for it, and we just praise you for it, God. I thank you for them that you'll continue to open the windows of heaven on their behalf and bless them in more ways than they could ever ask or think. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church.